We are going to solve quadratic equations, and we have three different methods. We're going to use factoring, graphing, and the quadratic formula. So here we go. The first one we're going to solve by factoring. Here are the steps. Set it equal to zero, factor, and then set those factors equal to zero. When we use the word solutions, we're also noting that those are the x-intercepts and the roots. So those three terms are used interchangeably. So if we start here, x squared plus 4x equals 0. This one usually throws some people off because it's already equal to 0, but it's not a trinomial like you expect it to be. So when you see this, you just think they have a GCF of x. So we're going to take out the GCF of x, and then I have it factored x parentheses x plus 4 equals 0. So we take each factor and set it equal to 0. x equals 0. x plus 4 equals 0. This one's done. When you subtract 4 from both sides, there's my other answer. So my two solutions are 0 and negative 4. All right, the next one, we are not going to take a GCF out of x squared plus 4x because it's equal to 32. It's not equal to 0 yet. So we're going to say x squared plus 4x minus 32. We had to subtract 32 from both sides equals 0. So this is x plus 8 and x minus 4. I needed factors of 32, negative 32, that add up to 4, and that was 8 times 4. Now I take each factor and set it equal to 0. x minus 4 equals 0. Add 4 to both sides, and I get 4. So there are my solutions. In this one, we have to make it equal 0. So 3x squared, I'm going to add 2x to both sides, minus 8 equals 0. So we're going to factor this, whatever method you're comfortable with. If you want to use the box, you can use the box, you can use grouping. I am going to guess and check. So 3x times x. I'm going to go with a plus 2 minus 4. Yes, positive 6 minus 4. So now I take each factor and set it equal to 0. So this one, I add 4 to both sides, and then I divide by 3. This one, I just subtract 2 from both sides and get my answer. So we're going to keep doing this for the next three. We're going to make it equal 0, factor it, and then set our factors equal to 0. Number four. Now you're going to be tempted to just take the square root of both sides and say six, but you're missing a solution if you do that. So let's make it equal zero to be safe. x squared minus 36. And then notice that that's a difference of squares. So x minus six and x plus six. So if you had taken the square root of both sides, remember that you have to do the positive and negative square root of 36. So I think making it equal 0 and factoring it is much safer to make sure you get all the right, correct answers. Let's factor number 5. I need factors of 20 that add up to 12, so I'm going to go with 10 and 2. 2x plus 5 and 2x plus 1. Again, if you want to use the box, use the box, whatever it takes to get these factored. So from here, we set each factor equal to 0. So 2x plus 5 equals 0. We solve for x. We subtract 5. We divide by 2. 2x plus 1 equals 0. We solve for x. Subtract 1 and divide by 2. And those are my solutions, my roots, my x-intercepts. Now, number 6 looks just like number 4. If you really wanted to, you could take the square root of both sides, but you just have to remember if you draw the square root, you have to put a plus or minus. 
If you want to do number six just like number four, you can. Make it equal zero and factor it using a difference of squares. All right, this time we're going to solve by graphing. So let's take a look. When I graph this, x squared plus 4x. Let's clear out all my graphs here, and I'm going to make my graphs go back to normal. Because we had them set up for inequality is a little bit ago. Okay, so I'm going to graph this one, x squared plus 4x. Didn't we just do that one? x. Oh, there we go. x squared plus 4x. We just did that one in the previous problem. So when I hit graph, actually here's my trick. I'm going to put this equation into y1 and then I'm going to put this equation into y2, and that's going to make the rest of this much easier. So I, on the one I put x squared plus 4x, on the other one I just put 0. And when I graph them, you'll see there's my quadratic and the red line shot across here. I want to find out where my graph hits the x-axis, here and here. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go, we're going to calculate the intersection. We've done that before. So second calc 5. Write that. Second calc 5. Calculate the intersection. Now you have your cursor blinking. If you use the up and down arrows, it's going to switch you between y1 and y2. So just know if you do up and down, you're not moving side to side. So here, I'm going to put the cursor where I think they intersect, and then I hit enter, enter, enter. They intersect at 0, 0. So my solution would be 0, the, y inter the intercept. Let's see, this is the root or the solution, and this is the x-intercept. I called it a y-intercept a second ago. Now let's find the other one. So we're going to do second trace, number five, and we're going to just arrow over till we get to the other place where we think they intersect and hit enter, enter, enter. And that is at negative four. So the other answer was x equals negative four. As an x-intercept, we would call it negative four, zero. So if we're just looking for solutions, you can give me the zero and the negative four. All right, let's try the next one. So this one, if I put the left side, 2x squared, oh, got to delete. I should have cleared the whole thing out. 2x squared plus 4x, and then 32 on the other one. Um, watch what happens when I graph. I don't see the red line. Why? Because it's at 32. And my graph right now only goes up to 10. So you have a couple of options. You can zoom out to try to see where the 32 is, or you could just change your window to make your y values go past 32. Well, 400 is too big. So that's one way to do it. I just changed my window so that I could see this line at 32. I'll show you the other way in just a minute. So we'll second calc 5. And remember, up. Up and down switches between the lines. So I just went to the red line because it was shorter. And then I'm going to hit enter, enter, enter. And they do not intersect somewhere nice, do they? 3.12. Didn't we just do this question? Did I enter something wrong? Oh, no, it was x squared. It wasn't 2x squared. So this would be the answer, 3.123. Hmm. Second calc, number five. Nope, we'll go back across to the other side. And when you get your cursor into the right place, you hit enter, 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 and it's negative 5.123. So 
So these were never going to be found by factoring because that wasn't going to factor. So using the calculator was our choice there. Let's see, I should write those down. Negative 5.123, and now I forgot what the other one was. Was it 3.123? Now, I changed my window to make this fit in my window. Let me go back to the normal window. Remember I told you the other option was to zoom out. So if I hit zoom, and number three is zoom out, hit enter. See, the, it just made the window smaller so that those two points would fit. And then you still do your, your second trace five to calculate the intersection. All right. And then I've got to go zoom six to make my window go back to normal. So zoom number six, standard, makes it go back to normal. All right, let's solve the next one. So clear out what you have. And we're going to say 3x squared plus 2x minus 8. This one might actually factor for us and give us nice answers. Graph. Okay, I can see two places where it's going to cross right here, and they might not be so bad. So second calc 5, go over here. I think this one is a, a one-third. Yep, 1 1.333, so that's one and one-third. I know that 0.3 repeating is one-third. If you didn't know that, you just put the 0.333. And then we'll calculate the other side. And I think that one's a negative 2. So we'll see. It is. X is negative 2. So those are our answers for those. So that's how we solve it with graphing on the calculator. We just second calc 5, we calculate the intersection. All right, let's talk about the quadratic formula. I've given it to you here. If you have your equation in ax squared plus bx plus c in standard form, here's your quadratic formula. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. So we're just going to identify what's a, b, and c and plug them into the formula. So here we go. This one, a is 1, b is 3, and c is negative 7. So we're going to plug those in and see what x equals. Negative b. Well, if b is 3, negative b is negative 3, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I am going to take everything underneath the square root and put it in my calculator. I'm not going to take the square root. I'm just going to take everything under it and put it in the calculator. So to get away from this screen, sometimes you hit clear and it'll take you away. Otherwise, it's second mode, which is second quit. So don't do the square root. Just do everything underneath. 3 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 7. So that's the square root of 37. I don't know about you, but I don't know what the square root of 37 is. So we're just going to leave our answer exactly like this. That is as simplified as it can get. If we put that in the calculator, we're going to get an estimate, and we want the exact answer. So once you get your square root, if it doesn't simplify, we just leave it alone. Let's try this one. A is 1, B is 8, C is 17. X is equal to negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. Here we go. So we're going to do the same thing again. I'm just going to leave these two numbers alone. And we're going to take what's underneath the square root and put it in the calculator. So 8 squared minus 4 times 17. 
and I get the square root of negative four. Well, we're gonna learn what to do with that in a future lesson. So for right now, we'll just leave that one alone. That is not simplified, but we're gonna learn that in our next lesson. We're gonna learn what to do with negative square roots. It's a lesson on complex numbers, so just know that we're coming back to that. So for now, if you get a square root, if you get the square root of 64, then calculate it. But if you get a weird square root like 37, just leave it inside the square root.